Hey everybody, it's Paige Evans. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been a minute since I've done a process video. Just been focusing on virtual classes and making mini albums. And now I'm so excited to share a process video using my Bungalow Lane collection and the patterned two by two paper pads. So the swatch books, the little two by two swatch books. I taught a virtual class yesterday with Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine and somebody asked me how to use these and I confess that I haven't really used them on a layout before. So challenge accepted. I have taken out all 18 different patterns from the pattern swatch book. There are 36 pieces of paper, two of each of the 18 designs. So I pulled those 18 two inch square pattern papers and then I took a pair of fine tipped scissors and I am slicing from the corner to almost the center of all four corners, folding in every other corner to the center and then adding a either chipboard button or an epoxy or not epoxy but puffy button sticker to the center to hold those edges in place or the corners in place however the chipboard and puffy sticker adhesive isn't strong enough to hold it in place so I just add a little bit of reinforcement with liquid glue zooming in closer so you can see the process of snipping from corner to the center don't go all the way to the center for any of the snips or else you'll just cut your square into triangles so leave about a half inch a quarter inch and it doesn't really matter um, how imperfect you crease the edges or get those corners into the center because the center will be covered up with the chipboard button or the puffy sticker button. So um, I am making 15 pinwheels. There are three pattern papers that I didn't, didn't end up using from the little two by two paper pads. And with those 15 pinwheels, I then needed to go from there. I've made all my pinwheels, now what? So I grabbed a bunch of different pattern papers from Bungalow Lane that I thought would work as well as, well as two three by four inch photos of my son Fox and his teacher from last year. And I really loved almost all of these backgrounds, but I just needed to decide on one. So I like how the pinwheels popped off of the navy blue striped paper. And then I also really liked the stars paper. So I didn't end up continuing in this direction, but I wanted to show you my full process. So I trimmed the barcode strips off of both pattern papers. And then I tore uh, the top section from the stars pattern paper and added the photos didn't glue anything down at this point. I'm just trying to figure out the direction I wanted to go. So I added the pinwheels on top and then I just decided it was too busy, right? There's a lot going on, although the whole layout does end up kind of busy anyway. But to tone it down, I decided to remove the stars paper and then wanted to do some mixed media on the background just for a little something something extra. So I was already liking the way this was looking without the stars pattern paper underneath. So I decided to go with it. And to do the mixed media, well first I placed the pinwheels and then took a picture with my phone in case I wanted to refer back to it for the exact same placement. Took everything off and then I'm adding some white gesso diagonally across the pattern paper and then just smudging it, fading it out to the edges, all in this diagonal from corner to corner because that's where I am going to place the pinwheels eventually. And this just helps the pinwheels pop off the background even more. And then once the gesso dried, I did speed up the drying process with a hairdryer. Then I came in with my star confetti stencil. I don't have these in stock anymore. However, I do have the cut file, so I can link to that in the video description. So you can cut out this cut file from cardstock and then just use it as a faux stencil and scrape this white modeling paste through. I'm just using a palette knife and this is Liquitex Basics Modeling Paste. 
scraping it on through and going right over the gesso diagonally. So I'm gonna do this three times, lifting the stencil, rotating it, just so it's not the exact same placement of stars. I'm just trying to mix it up. And even then, I wanted to add a tiny bit more stars, so just put it directly back on top. Tried not to press it too hard so it wouldn't smash and smush the previous stars. And I like the way that it looks, it's like a galaxy. Then I wanted to add more color, so I brought in my favorite watercolors. These are Pastel Dreams by Prima, and I mixed, mixed some of the colors together to get colors that matched Bungalow Lane and splashed it all over the background. So the background is dry, coming in with watercolors, mixing the colors to get the same colors as Bungalow Lane, splash, splash, splash and then dry, dry, dry with a hair dryer so I can keep going because I ain't got time to wait for paint to dry. So once it was dry, I referred back to my phone. I don't, I didn't end up using the exact same placement as my phone, but it was just a basic general reference. I wanted my pinwheels to go from corner to corner diagonally across the background. And I've got my two three by four inch photos overlapping there on the bottom right corner where there is some empty space. To attach the pinwheels in place, I'm using a dab of liquid glue. It's the same glue that I use to reinforce the buttons. It's Sticky Thumb by American Crafts. So adding a dab of glue, it takes a couple minutes for the glue to dry, but it is fairly quick drying. So then I'm gonna bring in embellishments from Bungalow Lane and pick and choose things that I like. I wasn't intending for this to be a school themed layout, but that is, kind of what it turned out to be. She's holding flowers, so I thought the plants worked. Teachers and apples go hand in hand, right? Books and teachers go hand in hand. So anything that I could find throughout the embellishments, the cardstock stickers, the chipboard stickers, the die cuts, I tried to create three clusters to create the all important visual triangle, right? So we've got one, two, three spots of embellishments to help you draw your eye all around the page. So the title is going to be Hello and Goodbye, and there is no, um, there are a couple tiny uh, word stickers that say good, so I just trimmed one out. I think it said goodness, so I just trimmed it to say good, added the thickers to say bye, and then came in with a bird paper clip, because birds and trees and apples, right? And a little house bungalow sticker that I thought, or it's a die cut that looks kind of like a schoolhouse. So then the last thing, adding my journaling down at the bottom, and that, my friends, is the finished layout. So featuring Bungalow Lane, the two by two paper pads, and some quick and easy pinwheels. I hope you are inspired to use the two by two paper pads in a fun way and create with Bungalow Lane. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you again sooner than later. Oh, here's my cute little kitty. This is her at the very beginning. <laughs> Have a good day.